certainly what's driven this uh, slowdown has been perceptions of China, uh, perceptions of the world economy. Uh, and uh, without a strongly growing economy, demand for uh, raw materials declines as night follows day. Uh, and I think what will change that will be a, a, a change in perception. I think uh, the market has looked at China and come to that, the US glass half full, uh, and uh, we're steadily starting to see uh, you know, progressively better economic statistics and more importantly uh, uh, improving uh, import statistics. We went through a very tough time of it uh, really just in recent months and that to us looked like a, uh, the end of the destocking phase and uh, restocking and uh, a, a more uh, prosperous looking China or a more prosperous looking US is certainly going to be positive commodities as a broad generalisation. Is it going to be a, a replay of what we've seen over the past two to three years? I mean, uh, uh, copper has been the, the, the long favoured uh, uh, commodity and look, I think on balance it's probably going to remain reasonably uh, um, a sort of flavour of the, of the month, although we have to remember that uh, with, as the copper price has remained high and above $3 a pound, you know, that's encouraged new production. A lot of the mines that have had problems are moving back into production. So, um, you know, I think maybe the, 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 the gloss has started to move. Uh, as I said uh, in the paper earlier, uh, nickel to me uh, appears to be very attractive. I think there's been a lot of projects that are simply uh, not achieving their full fruition and, and I think there's a very good chance that we'll see uh, nickel responding quite well. Uh, I think you know gold is a perennial favourite and uh, if we're looking for uh, you know, good reasons to buy QE3 and perhaps a, a bout of inflation is going to start uh, uh, pushing the gold price higher, although I think a lot of the stock, a lot of that story has played out. Uh, but it hasn't played out in, in the platinum group metals, in my judgment. For all the problems that the South African producers are happening, you know, the bulk of the industry is really struggling to produce anything at the moment. Uh, we think that this has got a long way to run, and we think that probably platinum closer to $2,000 an ounce is, is, uh, is really the, uh, the way that that one's going. So uh, for me, at the moment, nickel and platinum are the, are the two uh, favoured commodities. I think the, the, the level of investment in the, uh, uh, in the mining sector, I think in resources uh, as a whole, you know, let's, uh, let's not exclude the, the mega investments in uh, the North West Shelf Gorgon project, of course, the, the enormous uh, um, uh, LNG projects in Queensland. I mean, it has set unprecedented levels of capital expenditure in, in Australia uh, to the extent that I think a number of companies have sat down, had a hard look at capital budgets and decided they simply can't make these projects work. The best uh, example of that, of course, is Olympic Dam. Uh, we know that uh, uh, at current copper prices and uranium prices, this project will not work at the 30-odd billion dollars uh, capital. So BHP's uh, uh, put the kibosh on that. Uh, equally, you know, the, the, a lot of the big uh, expansions in iron ore have been sat on. And I think the, the companies are working out that it's better to ensure that you get uh, you know, good returns on your capital. Capital discipline is very much the, the order, of, uh, order of the day. And I think shareholders have been very vocal Local, uh, saying to companies, you know, we want returns on capital, we don't necessarily want new investments. So finally the companies are listening to investors and uh, are starting to return capital rather than investing in uh, what might otherwise be um, uh, um, uh, subpar returns on, uh, on, on that capital investment. I think we're rapidly moving into a, into a phase where M&A is going to be, become even more important. I think it's, it's been slow, uh, M&A has been slow in this part of the cycle. A lot of the, uh, the larger companies have been loath uh, to put their capital to work with M&A. There's always the question, is it cheaper to buy or is it cheaper to build? Uh, a lot of the big gold companies, for example, are, are strenuously drilling to try and replace uh, their ounces and that's struggling. They're struggling to do that, but at the same time they're reluctant to, uh, to put too much capital to work on, uh, in, t in a takeover environment. In the past that's actually been quite damaging of, uh, of, uh, uh, of their capital base. Um, I think m more likely we're going to see sort of small sort of regional consolidations. I mean we've seen for example, Silver Lake take over Integra, you know, two adjacent mining operations. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, we're going to start seeing more of the, of the um, uh, aggregation in West Africa, for example, and we've seen uh, um, uh, um, 
Adamus and Endeavour uh, merge, and they've just uh, now uh, put in a bid for, for Avion, so producing a nice little sort of potentially five, six, seven hundred thousand ounce uh, producer. We've seen uh, evolution here, sort of aggregating assets, and I think that's probably the level at which we'll see uh, M&A. Uh, will there be some big ones? Absolutely there'll be some big ones. Uh, a little bit harder to see, but I think more and more boards are looking at uh, uh, at use of capital and making sure that they don't destroy capital in whatever they do, whether it's putting money into new projects or putting money into, uh, into mergers and acquisitions.